Hi, God bless and welcome everyone to Talk Straight Bible. This is Elsie Valentine with you all here in this day. As always, giving God all the glory and all the honor for allowing us to come together here on Talk Straight Bible in this morning. Let's get into the word. I'm going to be reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 30. The word of God says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. In the story of the walls of Jericho, which you can find it in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, I always encourage people, read the entire chapter. It is a good story. Every Bible story is good. Every page you read, every time you open it, it's like a garden. You know, I say this to a lot of people. Sometimes, you know, it's like a rose. It smells good. Sometimes it's like one of those cactus. It, you know, it, pr it uh, pricks you. <laughs> and sometimes it's just beautiful, you know. So open up the Word of God. Read Joshua chapter 6. Read the Bible. It's It helps. <laughs> so here, Joshua was chosen to be Moses' successor. He was immediately faced with the situation which concerned his faithfulness and obedience. You know, Joshua, he was a man of courage, a man of faith, a man who was firmly grounded in the Lord, and he faced a challenging situation, and that was to conquer and overcome what stood in front of him and the entire congregation of Israel, and it was called the Walls of Jericho. One thing to note about Joshua is that he had a task given to him, he understood the assignment, and he knew that the walls needed to come down, but they can only come down with God and in God's timing and with God guiding him. You know, the purpose of a wall is that they are put in place to separate, to keep privacy, and sometimes they're also used in a support to hold up a structure. They also provide security and represent a place of shelter. Walls can be seen as a source of imprisonment and division. And in the days of the Old Testament, walls were created as a defense to keep people out. So if we look at this a little deeper, there are walls that are created in our lives that we create and we have yet to surrender these things to God. And so we need God to break them down. And these walls become a defense against the work that God wants to do in us. We limit God and keep him out of everything and only allow him to work in little areas of our lives. And so what happens is that fear and doubt and weariness, loneliness, rejection, you know, all that stuff separates us from receiving all that God has for us that are that is behind those walls. So to understand exactly what Joshua was facing, we must also understand why conquering these walls will become a great victory for Israel. And when you conquer your walls, you're going to understand why was it so important for you to receive that victory. Because sometimes it's not just about you. It could be a victory for your household, your entire household, your children, you know, your, your grandchildren and so forth. So when God wants to break certain things in your life, take it as a blessing that God is getting ready to deliver you, to restore you, and to do something new in you. So in the book of Exodus chapter 3, God called to Moses in the midst of the burning bush. And also, please read Exodus chapter 3. A very, this is a very powerful story. And he begins to tell Moses that he heard the cries of his people. And he wanted to deliver them out of slavery and out of bondage and give them a land of milk and honey. That was the land of Canaan, the promised land. And it was behind those walls that their promise lies the walls of Jericho. Now, I want to note that when God makes a promise, you know, he is faithful to complete every word he says. In the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19, in the beginning of the verse, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. And in Psalms 105, verse 8, it says, He remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. It's, when God makes a promise, you know, he is faithful to complete it. The task that Joshua needed to conquer would take much strength and encouragement. And it wasn't a physical strength 
that Joshua needed, but it was one that relied on God, one that relied on the power of God working in him. It's like what Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. God himself encouraged Joshua to be strong and courageous. And he said it to Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, verse 7, verse 9. And he also said it in Deuteronomy 31, 6. And I want to read it. It says, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. This was a very important time in Joshua's life. And he understood that God was with him at every moment. And if for a moment, if Joshua would have stopped and allowed doubt to set in, he would have been defeated and discouraged by his own self. Psalm 73, 26 says, my flesh and my heart fail, but God, don't you love when you hear, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. In Joshua chapter 6, <clears throat> God says to Joshua that they were to march around the city, all the men of war, and they were to go around it for six days, once every day. As they marched around these walls, they were to do this in silence. And it's important that when you're going through a trial, you have to keep marching and you have to keep silent. You know, when you're silent, you confuse the enemy because he doesn't know what is that person thinking? What are they up to? Silence is good. It's more powerful than words. And so this is what God had the men of war do. These were men who were carrying their instruments. They had their trumpets. They had their horns. They were ready to sound the alarm. But God told them six days, march around those walls. And so on that seventh day, God told them, proceed. It was on that seventh day that they marched around the wall for seven times. Six plus seven is 13. The number 13, as I was studying, you know, has a lot of meaning attached to it. A lot of commentators say that the number 13 is not an evil number, but rather it is a number of great promise and blessings of God. It is a twofold promise that always involves man and always involves God. It has a season, a time and circumstance in which God and men participate. And they had some factors here about the number 13 that I wanted to share. It says, the promise always has an underlying knowing that man can't make it happen himself. And that is true. We cannot do this without God. The number 13 always has the underlining fact that God determined it, said it, and it will happen regardless of the circumstances. It is the difference of what man can do and what man and what God can do. The number 13 promise also has time and space between when it is first given and when it is given to manifest. And in this story, you'll see here how God made this promise to Moses for the people that he was going to take them out of slavery. He was going to take them out of bondage. He was going to bring them to that land, that promised land, because this is what God had for them. And so when God says something, it doesn't matter the time. It doesn't matter the season. It will come to path. It will manifest because it is God's word. And so when God says to them, proceed, that word means to go. You know, don't look back. Run. When God gives you an order, run with it. Those walls, they look so impossible. But with God, there is nothing impossible. And when God is with you and for you, then who can come against you? Because when God is involved in everything that you do, you know he's going to back you up. Joshua's biggest accomplishment in conquering these walls of Jericho was his obedience, hearing God's word, hearing the voice of God and telling him how to move, how to march, how to step, how to go. Every time they marched around those walls, he had to hear God tell him, 
now it's time to proceed. And that's so important that we understand and learn to hear the voice of God and wait on him. In the book of Luke chapter 28, and I'm going to leave you with this last verse, it says, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. God made a promise. He's faithful to complete it. March around those walls. If you have not surrendered those things in your life that have been obstacles, that have hindered you for many years, let God begin to show you how those walls need to come down because these walls of Jericho, they didn't just come down. The Bible says they came flat down and they were able to receive that promised land that God had for them. So I pray that you are blessed. You are highly favored and that you know that you are the righteousness of the living God. May the Lord bless you, keep you, shine his face upon you and keep seeking God no matter what stands in front of you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Amen.